networking. You might not think of yourself as a networker. You might not think that that's a word that applies to you. But of course, networking is a word that applies to all of us. In fact, I would go further and say that networking has never been something that we've done more. If you think about it from the perspective of applying for a job, whether you're raising capital, whether you're sharing information or sharing a development that you need the world to hear about, we are always, always, always networking. Sometimes you're the person that's doing the networking. You're the person that's putting something out there, whether it's something to sell, whether it's yourself, whether it's an idea. You're the person that's doing the networking. Sometimes you're on the receiving end. You're the object of somebody else's networking. And I guess it's easier for us to be objective about networking when we're the object of it. And sometimes, just sometimes, it can look a little bit like this. Hello. My name is Paul Taylor. You don't know me, and I haven't told you anything about me. But I'd like to know you, and I'd really like it if we could connect. So please connect. And then sometimes, once they know you, it develops into something like this. Hi, pals. It's Paul Taylor again. I don't really have anything to say. I've not really done anything new lately. But I guess I just want you to know that I'm still here. So I'm going to share some funny videos of kittens doing funny things in the hope that you will like. So in that case, please press like and I'll be very happy. Thank you. Now, of course, what we do nowadays from a networking perspective, that might be social networking. You might do that in your own social circle. But I'll tell you that from a professional perspective, that's not networking. And it's certainly not working. I have thought about networking from my perspective. And if I'm honest, I don't even like the word networking. It speaks to me of cigar smoke filled rooms with entitlement, with privilege, with special access. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've delivered. It doesn't matter how good you are. It's not what you know, it's who you know. It's privilege, it's exclusivity. You're in and you're out. It's getting ahead through nudge, nudge, wink, wink. And I guess that's why I've always been uncomfortable with the concept of networking. But then I got to thinking about it. And I got to thinking, well, can I honestly say that I've never ever benefited from networking? Can I honestly say that I'm so above it that I never needed networking? And I honestly regret to tell you that the answer is, is no. I can honestly say that networking is not just important, it's maybe one of the most important things that I've had to develop as a skill in my time. I went to school in Glasgow. I went to university here in Glasgow. I left Glasgow in 2000, I moved to London. I became a management consultant. I then worked in the payment industry for a few years. And today I work for one of the largest banks in the world. And I will tell you that as much as it might pain me logically, without networking, I'm not sure that I would have had the jobs that I've been lucky enough to have. I'm not sure that I would have had the roles within those companies and even the role promotions unless I'd been reaching out to people to tell them what it is that I think and that I've been doing. If I hadn't gone to the conferences, if I hadn't gone to the events and networked with my clients, I'd have never met them. There are deals that would never have happened. There is business that would have never been done 
that benefited both myself and the client. I wouldn't have been able to hire some of the fantastic, really great people that I've been able to hire. I wouldn't have been able to work for some of the great, great bosses that I've had that have taught me so much. I certainly wouldn't have met the phenomenal graduates that I've been lucky enough to hire and to work with who probably taught me more, with all my due respect, than the great bosses. And so I have to be honest and say that I've seen networking from all sides. I've both networked and I've also been the subject of other people's networking. And I thought from that perspective, it would be useful to share with you today five perspectives in terms of how networking can be done better, both in terms of the top tips, the things that really work, but also in terms of the things that I've seen that really don't work at all. Tip number one. No matter, no matter how positive your intentions, your approach may not come across as you intend. To illustrate this, I'm going to introduce you to somebody that you might know. He might be in the room. I'm going to introduce you to Charles. You might never have met Charles, but I'll guarantee that at some point you've had an email from somebody that looks a bit like the email I received from Charles. Now, Charles is a lovely guy. Charles writes me a note. I've never met the guy before, and he tells me, Paul, I'm Charles, and I work for a government department in Canada. I'm an auditor. And during one of my regular audits, I found a dormant bank account with $22.2 million in this account. And here's the great part, Paul. Here's the great part. The person whose account this was had the same surname as you. His surname was Taylor too. Imagine my surprise. And he had the same nationality. And we were thinking, because we're great people and we only want the best for you, we were thinking that if we could open an account in your name, we could make a claim for that money to be transferred into that account and we would give you a very small portion of that money for yourself. Doesn't that sound great? Now, Charles, I'm sure, is a lovely, lovely guy. Charles only has positive intentions. And I'm not going to imagine for one second that maybe there's something dubious about this, but I'll tell you that with, with great reticence, I, I didn't take Charles up in his offer. I didn't volunteer all of my personal details and banking details to Charles, just in case. And I'm not suggesting that any of you here in the room today would necessarily fall for something like this, although I'm sure that Charles is a great, great guy. That's not my point. My point is that when we reach out to other people, especially in writing, but when we reach out to people from a networking perspective, we have to be so careful, no matter how good our intentions, no matter how sincere our objectives, no matter how selfless we think we're being, there's every possibility that we sound just like Charles with very good intentions and actually coming across potentially as a bit of a scam artist, no matter how good your intentions. No matter how good your intentions, think about how your approach comes across because it may not be as you intend. Tip two. It's always about them. And it's never about you. I've been in sales a long time, in one form or another. You'll learn that in your professional career, on some level, you're always selling, no matter whether you're in sales or not. I've seen a lot of pitches, some good, some not very good at all. And without sounding overly cynical, I'm here to tell you that people that don't know you today, who you are trying to convince, don't care about what you have to sell. They don't care about the features and benefits of your product. They don't care about your price. 
They don't care about your great CV or resume or how unique your experience. It's not that they're not nice people, they just really don't care. You have to connect, you have to make it about them. You have to tap in to what it is that you've got to say that's going to move them forward. And then you will find that they have limitless attention for your product, for what it is that you've got to sell, for the features and the benefits, for the pricing. They really, really want to hear about your resume and your great experience and how that can be put at their service. It's always about them. It's never about you. And I've seen so many great salespeople, so many great people, great professionals, in the pursuit of networking, make that one very simple mistake. And so further to that, tip three, do your homework. We live in the age of information. There is more available information today than probably any of us is comfortable with. It takes so little effort to look up the results of a company. It takes so little time to do that background research on something that that company just announced or some results that they just published or some breakthrough that they just made. On a personal level, we have LinkedIn and we have Twitter and we have so much online content that we can tap into. Use it. Now, of course, and I say this as a big health warning, don't be a stalker. Nobody, no matter how impressive you are, is, gonna, is going to want to network with you, is going to want to help you if they feel creeped out by the nature of your approach, by the absolutely thorough completion of your research. But I will say that it is so impressive when people take the time to do their homework and to reach out in a really thoughtful, personalized way that says, I understand that you're interested in this. I understand what you're trying to achieve. And I'm bringing you something or myself because I think I can be helpful to you in the pursuit of your goals. It makes all the difference in the world. Do your homework. Tip number four, and this one probably applies to the people in this room more than most, but it, overall, I, I've got to believe it applies to everybody. Be the best version of you, not your best version of the person that you think that they want you to be. I see it all the time. I'm so lucky I get to hire graduates. And these people are incredible. They're superhuman. It says in most of these resumes, I climbed Everest with a blindfold on and with a small Tibetan child strapped to my back. I swam the Amazon. And in the process, I killed two alligators with my bare hands. I played Rachmaninoff in a piano recital at Carnegie Hall in New York, just before my fifth birthday. Superhuman. And we race as employers. We race to sign these people up. We can't wait. It is a jungle out there, and we want those people. They are geniuses. They're going to make us so much better. And we bring them in, and they arrive, and it's not them. It's not the person in the CV. It's not that they were lying. It's that they turn up as a robot, anesthetized version, because they think that's what we're looking for. They think that we're looking for the blank canvas, and it's such a shame because they know stuff and they have views and they have perspectives and they have views about the stuff that they see in us that's broken. 
which we really need because it's guys like me that probably created the stuff that's broken in the first place and we need people like them to come and fix it. And yet they are in the mistaken belief that they should turn up and be a blank canvas. And sadly, in the age of the millennial and centennial, typically what happens is that after a year or two years, they leave. Because it turns out that it's not engaging them as much as they thought it would. They're not getting to be themselves. They're not getting to share their experience. That drive that created that Everest climbing, Amazon swimming, Rachmaninoff playing genius cannot be fulfilled by pretending to be a blank canvas. Now, of course, I'm talking about that from the perspective of employment. I'm talking about that from the perspective of a graduate entering into a professional workplace. But I'll tell you, it's true in all forms of networking. The more consistently you can bring yourself to that person or to that organization that you are trying to introduce yourself to, the better the reception, the better reaction you will get in that networking experience. The world of work today is not that different from Formula One. And for those of you that don't know the sport, this is an intensely creative, uh, creative and competitive sport that sees 20 or 25 cars race on a variety of circuits across the year, on average for two, two and a half hours per race, over 60 laps or so. And at the end of the race, in spite of the fact that they all are in more or less a car with the same chassis, a car with more or less the same engine, a car with more or less the same tires, on the same track, in the same weather conditions, the race always finishes with first and second place being separated by probably less than a hundredth of a second, in spite of all that. And the world of work isn't too different. It's possible that your greatest competitive advantage is not your education, it's not where you came from, it's not the fact that you're an Everest climbing, Amazon swimming, Rachmaninoff playing pianist. But it might just be in what you think and how you feel. Be the best version of you, not your best version of the person that you think they want you to be. Tip number five. You're always networking, always. You just never know what life is going to throw up in terms of a networking opportunity and you can never really switch off from that. I approached Strathclyde, not because I was trying to sell Strathclyde anything, quite the opposite. I approached Strathclyde, the university, because I couldn't understand why we didn't have more Strathclyde graduates working in the place where I work. And they were lovely, and they invited me to give a talk. And I loved it, and thankfully they did too. And then they invited me to give another talk. And at the end of that talk, if I hadn't given that talk, I wouldn't have met two lovely people called Andrew and Pamela. And they wouldn't have invited me to their TED event here today, and I certainly wouldn't be here today. And what they would have never known is that I could have only dreamed, dreamed, of being invited to come and give a TED talk. Of course, that's not why I approached the university. That's not why I gave the talk. But that's what ended up happening. I ended up fulfilling a personal ambition because I came and did this thing, which was about helping graduates to come and get more jobs in the place where I work. You're always networking, always. And if I can, I'm gonna give you a little networking challenge. There's a book by a guy called Daniel Priestley. It's called Entrepreneur Revolution. I don't read a lot of these types of books, but I have to say that Daniel offers some fantastic advice. And in that book, he offers a number of challenges for helping you to be a more complete key person of influence. And one of the challenges that he offers is to buy three coffees or lunches or drinks, whatever your predilection, every week for somebody that you don't know. Not the same person, not all three coffees for the same person. That goes back to the point I made earlier about stalking. Don't be a stalker. But take it as an opportunity to practice your networking skills. Take it as an opportunity to meet with people. You might not even know why you're meeting with them, 
but take it as that opportunity to meet with them, to engage with them, to try and learn more about what they do, to try and learn ways to package what you do and what's interesting to you in a way that's far more interesting to them. And even if those conversations don't result in anything, and even if there's nothing that they can do to help you, I promise you, I promise you, that that muscle group that you build up in developing those networking skills will pay back fulsomely later in your career. I promise you it's one of the greatest investments you can make. Three copies per week. In this room today, we have people who in their life will go on further into academia, into further research, into further study. We have people here today who will spend their life in their kitchen with a fish slice and a ladle, dreaming up recipes that most of us ne have never heard of. We have people here today who will go and work in companies all over the world. We have people here today that will be CEOs of multi-billion dollar companies that don't even exist yet. And if I may, I will leave you with this one last thought. Believe me or not, there are people out there who can help you to go further and go faster than you can in your own. And if you do it correctly, then again, believe me or not, there may also be people out there who would benefit from networking with you. And that, for me, is where networking works. Thank you very much.